joining us. And I will turn it over to Lori Overholt to introduce our speaker. Um, and Lori is a club leader for the UVA Club of the Tidewater. Lori. Thank you, Josh. Um, so today we have with us Kate Pittman, who's the executive director of the Vibe Creative District in Virginia Beach. And she served in that role. She's the only one who's been in that role and has served in that role for five and a half years now. Um, in April of last year, Kate, along with uh, Jeremy Maloney, a graduate of the School of Architecture at UVA, um, did a presentation describing the history and vision of the remarkably successful Creative Vibe District in Virginia Beach. And if you missed that, uh, you can see a video of it on uh, the YouTube channel for the UVA clubs. And today, um, Kate is going to share what the Vibe District has done to promote diversity and inclusion and answer any other questions that people may not have gotten answered last time. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Kate for her presentation. Thanks, Kate. Thank you all for inviting me to do this today. And I'm really excited to come back and just share some updates um, after what we were able to share last year, which was really kind of more of a historical retrospective, so to speak. And now we're really gonna um, talk about some of the, the action-oriented work that we've done in the community to really address diversity and inclusion. Let me just see if I can get my... There we go. Oops. Okay, there's a little bit of a lag, so bear with me. The context really quick, I'm just got a couple of slides here to just remind people in case you're not familiar what the VIBE is. VIBE stands for Virginia Beach, B-I-B-E, and we are this designated um, arts district, which it was enacted with the city council ordinance back in 2015. You can see us where this funky footprint in the center of this map in the central beach area of Virginia Beach in the resort. And it's also been commonly called the entertainment district. Here's a really complicated map. I always love to look at maps <laughs> just because they do tell you quite a bit. And I'm not expecting you to read this whole thing, but this is a look at the resort area strategic plan. Um, and I just kind of want you to be aware of all the moving parts and all the different things that happen here in the city of Virginia Beach. Um, and we're a part of those resort plans and thinking about the future and how Virginia Beach is represented um, on, not only on a local level, but also on a national or an international level. Um, and we're literally smack dab in the middle of everything that goes on. <laughs> and so for better or for worse, um, we're kind of in it here on the daily with everything that's going on. Here's kind of a more recent map that really hones in on that central beach area, which shows you that the vibe has um, kind of spurred up, you know, we were not in a long-term formal plan. This is, this was grassroots. This is truly brought to the public by a group of citizens that got engaged and worked with the city to create this platform called an arts district to really revitalize an area of the resort that had a lot of crime, a lot of empty property, and some real trouble, um, trouble points to it. But it was so actually um, important that this valuable land <laughs> be reenacted and revitalized because we're right between the convention center, and now the new sports center and the oceanfront, which was now going to see this new Atlantic park development. So we're lucky that we've had five plus years of growth to get in here and do the dirty work, so to speak, before these uh, larger entities like the sports center, which now brings in over a hundred thousand people a year. And now um, with the breaking ground of Atlantic park, which is another entity that will likely be bringing in 100,000 people or more. So this is our funky footprint. Just a quick reminder, it is a carved out on purpose to really incentivize commercial properties and also um, revitalize opportunities for small business. Um, so it did cut out city properties and residential. Not that we don't love our residents <laughs> and our city properties, but this was really intentional um, as that revitalization effort. Here's what our map looks like today. So we went from, you know, kind of boring city, city issued map of just laying out the land and then boom, here's everything that has happened in the Vibe District. So we have worked tirelessly to bring in the artists and the makers, to bring in this new culinary arts scene, to highlight and advocate for all the retail, health and fitness service, anyone that's in here doing creative work, um, we have wanted to be there to support them. 
so much so that the Vibe nonprofit actually took some city funding that had been allocated for us to do the work that we were doing and redirected it back to the Office of Economic Development in 2018 to help start the city's first small business matching grant program. So when we think about diversity and inclusion, it's across all levels. Um, and what we had found was that the city of Virginia Beach was incentivizing big, large corporations to come into this town, um, but not much was being done for the little guy, an entrepreneur that maybe only had one or two people there. So that small business grant program that we began here in the Vibe District was so successful that it's actually gone citywide now. Um, but we're also looking at um, garden spaces, parklets. We have an urban wander guide. We're looking at the physical property of all the city land, you know, the roads, the sidewalks, all those things that we can implement our projects on. So I mentioned that VIBE stands for Virginia Beach. And so I always tell people it is two things. It's a geographic location, right? We're on a map, but then also we're this nonprofit. And I um, mentioned before, grassroots efforts of local citizens to get involved and help improve the community in which they lived and worked. And that would be um, our nonprofit board and also our board that is more of a business association board. So I'm happy to report our VIBE nonprofit has raised over a million dollars since 2015 to do the work that we are doing. And we're so proud of that. Um, we do receive about 40% of our income comes from the city of Virginia Beach because we are acting on their behalf to do a lot of the things that we're doing, but we have met and exceeded the money that they have given us from private investors to return and that value to them. Uh, real quick, I'll just note the co-founders, Andrew Fine and Laura Woodhubber, who are active business owners here in the city of Virginia Beach. They worked tirelessly with the city leadership under Jim Spore's uh, leadership back in the day, and also with the city attorneys and the director of cultural affairs, Emily LeBose, to write the ordinance that enacted the Vibe District. Um, and they are both very well seasoned and very well respected in the community and have received multiple awards. And then since I've had the opportunity to join that club, <laughs> I've been able to receive a, a few acknowledgements as well from the community. Um, but we have received as an organization, the Human Rights Commission Award back in 2019, which directly speaks to diversity and inclusion. And then also an award from the Virginia Beach Schools um, for the arts, for being an arts partner. So this nonprofit and business association for anyone who's anywhere nearby and is, has an interest, you're always welcome to reach out and call and see how you can get connected. Um, Lori has been a great supporter over recent years to help our mural festival project, um, but it really does come down to the individuals sharing resources and digging in, sometimes rolling up their sleeves, as you can see here, to get out and, and clean up spaces and make things happen. So our, we are nowhere without these really dedicated local business owners here in the Vibe. Um, as we look at our kind of five-year success report, uh, we've had a lot of successes. There's been over 50 new businesses that have come in to this neighborhood. We've had over 50 large-scale murals added to the neighborhood, most of them from our mural festival project. Hundreds of works of art engaged in the community and paying artists, which is very important, artists at every skill level um, and at every point in their career. The earned media attention has been really significant uh, for the city of Virginia Beach. We have recorded and tracked over 750 positive press articles over the last five to six years. And that includes local, regional, national, and international press. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, Southern Living did a great article on Virginia Beach and Vibe was recognized and noted as an identifying you know, area of Virginia Beach and a good place to visit. So we're very proud of that. Um, but then also there's a whole other story about the economic <laughs> impact and the value that the city earns and all the new taxes that are coming in, such as from the real estate values going up $45 million. And with all those 50 new businesses, there's quite a lot of earned tax revenue that comes back to the city. So they're investing for sure. And we're so grateful to have the city support, but they're also earning <laughs> quite a bit. And we're happy that they're seeing that return in investment. Um, and you might remember this from last year, but it's such a fun little trivial thing to put out there. Vibe was actually featured on Jeopardy back in 2018. Um, and we're grateful to be a distinguishing factor about our city. We love where we live. We're excited to live and work here. Um, and we're glad to be part of that recognition.
So as we get into kind of the diversity and inclusion efforts, you know, when I first started and when Vibe was really getting off the ground, it was very much an experimental project. Um, I was hired on a one-year contract. Just let's see what happens, they told me. <laughs> and the city initially kind of said, you know, all right, well, we don't know if this is going to work or not, but here's, you know, a, a, some start seed money and let's just see what we can do. So initially for us, diversity and inclusion meant just doing different things for different people, right? <laughs> we did not have a very specific targeted plan. Um, we knew we wanted to address people of all ages and all skill levels. So some of our projects were crafted to be very accessible um, to different types of people. We knew diversity among arts uh, mediums and styles of art was very important to reflect the community that we live in. So we did not want to say it's only um, visual public art. No, we wanted to include poetry and dance and film and musical performances here, um, even culinary arts, uh, digital art, sound art, all of those things were very important to kind of experiment with and play with because we hadn't seen a lot of those things before in our city. Um, and we also knew that there was an educational component to what we were doing, right? We had to educate the public, but we also wanted to educate our local youth and say, this is a city that wants to embrace arts and culture, and we want you to grow with us through this process. So a lot of our efforts to grow up artists from the schools have been really important to us. Um, back in 2016, probably the biggest thing that we did that got the most public appeal was painting a crosswalk in the middle of 19th uh, Street in Cyprus with Hampton Roads Pride. And this was a rainbow crosswalk with two origami uh, looking cardinals, which are the state bird. And we had about 500 people show up to help paint this 40 foot by 40 foot artwork in the middle of the road um, and became a very important symbol very quickly to a large population of people. Um, and we were so grateful that this symbol of inclusivity and um, equity in our neighbors, in our, in our city was right in our neighborhood and also down the street from the convention center. Back in 2017, we invested in and had built an artist design stage to be able to help start incorporating dance and theater and performing arts and, and really integrating more activity here in the center of the district. And we also wanted to be mindful that not everybody has the ability to get in their car and drive here or to hop on their bike and come here. And so trying to think about the layers of how people can have exposure to us without actually being here. And we created a tool on a whim <laughs> that has become um, immensely successful. We have almost 400,000 views now of our online Google map, which is just another tool of educating the public about what they're gonna come see. We put in pinpoints for all the different projects that we've done, who the artist is, what the business is that they're attached to um, and all of that. And this has been um, an incredible resource for us, mostly because it allows us to track how many people are, are viewing it. And because of this tool and several other online tools, Vibe was invited last year to participate in an international uh, platform discussion on creative territories um, because they could find us all the way in Brazil. They found us <laughs> and they wanted to talk to us about what we're doing. And that's just really cool. Um, in 2018, we were able to adopt this love sign that came into, and this has been hands down the most popular thing that we have done. Um, if any of you want a love sticker, you send me an email and I'll drop one in the mail to you. Uh, we have printed probably close to 35,000 love stickers at this point because this symbol of acceptance and love and this reflection of these elements of Virginia Beach um, that were designed by a young 23-year-old Asian American girl here um, who has gone on to study uh, urban planning and architecture and all that. She came up with this idea for the love sign and we tapped it into the state tourism and it has become a very important landmark in the city of Virginia Beach and here in Vibe. We had the first 3D love sign back in 2018. Also in 2018, we established a really important relationship with the Human Rights Commission. And they had an event that they wanted to get off the ground called the Season for Nonviolence. Um, it is no secret that Virginia Beach, like many other cities, struggles with violence. And it is a nationwide crisis um, that became really difficult during COVID. Um, but it still remains difficult today. And so we continue to celebrate annually this season for nonviolence, which is all about spreading messages of, of peace, of um, kind conflict resolution, of mental health and um, positivity in our neighborhoods and really teaching young people how to deal with these heavy issues so that they don't grow up to be people that think that violence is the solution. 
We added in utility box art, which um, might not seem like a diverse kind of thing, <laughs> but if you are someone who's not physically able to paint or get, uh, um, get involved in some of these um, more physical types of artwork, this is digital art. And all the artists have to do is submit a digital graphic design file to us, and then we are able to print them professionally and wrap them around boxes. And so it, it is actually an inclusive effort to work with artists of every skill level. Back in 2019, we started um, our first real effort to do a mural that had a, a, a real purpose behind it. And Samaritan House reached out to us and wanted to have a mural that allowed them to have their hotline on display in a very public space and a very visible area. And so they reached out, we were able to connect them with a private property owner to do this beautiful uh, mural here that shows these kind of triumphing hands of strength that are in the uh, hands of men, women, and children, if you look at the sizes of the fists. Um, and that really kind of changed our thinking about, you know, okay, the art is not just beautification, which we need greatly in a very kind of un unsightly area, but it actually can have a lot of purpose and meaning. And so you'll see some more examples of that shortly. But in 2020, we adopted, like many people, <laughs> many nonprofits, we adopted a statement of cultural equity. Um, this is interesting, and even amongst our own board, we did have a little bit of resistance to this, which is kind of counterintuitive, I think. But people were like, well, what do you mean we have to adopt this statement and why? And But actually, from the federal level to the state level, all of the funding now, um, due to the dramatic shifts that happened in 2020 um, regarding cultural equity, it's this is a necessity. This is good business moving forward, and we have to make a statement and then prove through the work that we do, that we're following through on it. Um, and so we're very glad to have this because it has allowed us to back up and justify some of the things that we've been doing that are very important for our community. So in 2020, in the summer, um, immediately after some of the major headlines about the social unrest and the racial issues that were happening across America, one of the first things that we did was reach out to the city and ask if we could redivert some of our, planning, our planned funding to do three of our pop-up murals that would feature younger black artists in our community and welcome them into the neighborhood and give them high profile paid jobs here and get them as much TV exposure as we could because we wanted to say, we're gonna be a part of implementing uh, visible change, but also helping these artists get some attention that they deserve and that they should have in their own hometown. So we partnered with Utopia Fenny, which is based out of Kempsville, Virginia Beach, which has been doing amazing work over the last few years to really work with artists that were maybe struggling or had not felt seen or had not had opportunities locally. And we were able to, you know, put them out on the main streets in the vibe and welcome them here. Additional things that we did during that time was to really highlight and promote the Black businesses that were operating in the Vibe District, to work with our friends over at Teens with a Purpose, to allow space and room or creative responses to some of those issues that were happening. And so we hosted an, an open mic with them and engaged with their youth to come into the Vibe District and do some specific programming. And then through our larger platforms like the Mural Festival, we worked very closely with business owners to say, you know, this needs, we need to break this mold. We have an overwhelmingly response of white artists that are applying for these jobs. And so of course, more white artists are getting these jobs, but how do we help create room and growth and opportunity for black artists or artists of different cultural backgrounds? And so in 2020, we were so grateful to have the opportunity to feature our first female um, black artist, Brianna Cole, with her beautiful work over here at Crocs Bistro. And then also to engage Clayton Singleton, who's a very, very well-known artist in this area. Um, and, to, and to have him come collaborate with a white artist, with teens and other people to do a real message. So it was the first time we really kind of said our mural festival is going to have vocal messages that are important for our community here. And so on the front of the Virginia Museum of Contemporary Art, they put out this beautiful community mural. And then in other ways, in grassroots ways, some of our nonprofit members or community leaders that are behind the Vibe District really engaged in what are the other ways and tools that we can help be visible and bring attention to these matters when maybe there wasn't a formal City of Virginia Beach response happening. 
Um, and we want to be a part of engaging people and reflecting back to them the important messages that need to be heard. Um, this project here, real beautiful art project, uh, but it was actually assembled by working with diverse youth in art camps from uh, once, once upon a time called from one hand to another, now it's called yellow. Um, and it was groups that were targeting the most diverse students in the area during summer enrichment programs. And they helped us paint a thousand birdhouses that then became this beautiful public art installation next to the convention center. And then kind of moving past 2020 and thinking forward for 2021 and beyond, we've gone on to implement several other projects and strategies to really continue fostering and engaging artists from diverse cultural backgrounds. Um, that includes the formalization of our rainbow crosswalk as the 19th street construction project was done. The artwork that was originally painted was actually installed out of bricks. The brick hardscaping actually won a national award because it's you know, tricky to put bricks into a giant piece of art. Um, and then this thermoplastic rainbow on all four sides around it is again, that message of an inclusivity and acceptance of all people. If you do anything after today, I highly encourage you to go Google rainbow crosswalks. They are all over the world and there are some really stunningly beautiful ways that people, people interpret that message um, and how lucky we are to have that here in the city of Virginia Beach, that it was embraced by our local government and they allowed this to happen. We're so grateful. In 2021, we put out our first ever exclusive call for artists for diverse backgrounds. Um, and it was, it was interesting. We received some pushback from the public. We received some not so nice comments. But we said, you know what, this is important. And if we want to um, say that we're committed to doing this and actually provide those paid opportunities, we need, we need to do it. And so we had an opportunity where eight of these pillars, which are called neighborhood identifiers, go straight down 19th Street between the convention center and the boardwalk. These were exclusively reserved for an artist of a, a diverse background. And we left that very broad. It was up to the artist to explain to us <laughs> how they saw themselves as a, a diverse person. So we had artists that were Filipino, artists that were of Mexican descent, artists that were, um, or Hispanic. You know, we had um, black artists. We had artists of a very multitude of backgrounds apply for that and eight were selected. They were all paid $1,000 to paint their artwork for a six month time period. Um, and it really did change the aesthetic of the street. And we were happy to have them. They felt so included and honored and they started to understand that we're very serious about making sure they feel welcome here um, and that the public understands that there's lots of different diverse points of view here in Virginia Beach. Um, another fun project that we did and um, what's interesting is when you know we kind of put out these messages, we put out these intentional um, feel good vibes, these good vibes to people, and then you start to hear them back, right? So through these education pro, uh, programs with Virginia Beach schools, um, when we invite them to uh, submit things to us, then we start to see those messages responded back to us. So I love this little dog that says unity that a, a high schooler painted, um, things like stay humble, positive vibes, you know, um, be, be strong. We're excited that the students then hear these messages and, and speak them back to us. There's a beautiful shot of that parking lot installation. Um, again, just diversity, diversifying the types of art projects that we do, we did go ahead and add in painted meters on 19th Street. Um, this is, you know, you might kind of say like, how is that diverse? Well, it's a much smaller um, opportunity for artists to get engaged. You know, it's not a whole wall. It's not the pressure of a pillar on the road that everyone's staring at as they come up to an intersection. These little bite-sized projects are actually a really important um, opportunity for people when they're trying, they're trying it out, right? They wanna learn how to get engaged. They wanna learn if they can actually accomplish something. Um, and these little bite-sized projects are perfect for that to engage um, both students and professionals. These Chinese dragons here in the center were actually painted by a high school senior, which I just love. And then diversifying the types of programs that we offer throughout the community. Um, we are actually in the Vibe District at the meeting of three different watersheds. And so environmental issues are common all around Virginia Beach. We all know about the flooding referendum and all those big things, but we really wanted to kind of point out 
where are those areas that are on private property? Where are the areas that are on public property that you can actually make things happen and do visual changes? And so we did point out 10 different urban gardens around the neighborhood. We've offered urban garden tours and we're working with um, landscape designers who have been winning awards for these projects. And we're working with Lynn Haven River now who is good about explaining to small businesses how they can and why they should support environmental issues. Here's a really beautiful flower cut mural that took place last summer with um, NAMI Coastal Virginia. And this is in one of our award-winning butterfly gardens here in the Vibe. This would be a paved roadway, but it's actually now a public garden. And this three-part flower mural was put together really to draw and focus in on mental health awareness for people on, in the middle of COVID when it was such an important thing to be aware of and to consider. And then to try to kind of bring back some of the fun, right? <laughs> COVID was hard on all of us and we needed to get the community back out. We needed to get them engaged and excited. Uh, we were able to get some seed funding from the city of Virginia Beach to start adding live entertainment um, on an almost weekly basis at our park area and really bringing in a diverse lineup of artists. We've worked with BJ Griffin here, who's featured there on, I don't even know what kind of an instrument that is. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like a guitar, might be something else. Um, but he's helped us bring in a really wide variety of men, women, um, black musicians, Hispanic musicians, just trying to bring in um, and diversify. We even had um, an amazingly talented 14 year old girl come in and do a whole set in the Vibe District to add out and bring excitement to performing arts. The largest event that we did last year, <laughs> right after they lifted all the COVID restrictions, was this Pride and the Vibe event with Hampton Roads Pride. And you can see the enormous attention and participation that that event got here. Uh, we're looking forward to repeating that this year. We do believe we had over 3,000 people at that event, um, which is the largest uh, event we've ever done. And then we've also been looking at this out outreach to Title I schools. So, you know, when we adopted this diversity statement, it was like, well, you know, our, the, the audience that comes to us is one audience, but we can go out and we can communicate with totally separate audiences that can be very intentional. So while all of the restrictions were in place with COVID and they were not allowing field trips, they weren't allowing hands-on arts activities in schools, we were able to sneak in <laughs> on the down low one artist to four different Title I schools to put out messages of inclusivity, of diversity, and of love and support to those children that were having really difficult school years. So here are the renderings that were uh, by the artists that were sent out to do those murals. It was such a successful project that we're duplicating it again this year. Um, and just being mindful and thinking about those youth that are one day, you know, 50 years from now, going to be in charge of our city. And what do we want them to be thinking about and understanding about the role of arts and culture in their town and how they can have an influence. And so for the past uh, mural festival in 2021, I mentioned how that Samaritan House mural really changed our perspective on what we could be talking about with the art. And sometimes um, I'm a huge fan of art for art's sake. I worked at a museum. I know the importance of letting artists do what they want. Um, and that's very valuable, but it's also very valuable when the art can speak to audiences and have really important messages. So here is a Keep It Beachy Clean partnership mural that was um, on the resort uh, management office here in the Vibe District. And this is where all the beach ambassadors that help clean up the streets all around the Vibe <laughs> and down at the oceanfront strip, um, this is where they come and work out of. And so to have this really fun mural where all of the uh, marine life are actually helping to clean out the oceans, we thought was a really fun and engaging way to talk about environmental issues. Then we worked with artist Victoria Weiss, who goes by Butter Pop Art, to partner with the Armed Services Arts Partnership for a really important military mural. We are an audience um, here made up of a lot of military, both active and retired. And one of the big headlines um, that came out of 2020 and early 2021 was actually a lot of issues concerning um, military people going missing. If you think about Fort Bragg and some of the other headlining, you know, people going missing and then it being determined that it was due to military on military violence. 
Um, and so these two beautiful murals have a lot of hidden meaning in them, but they also include a plaque that recognizes victims of sexual military trauma, which is a real hard topic to talk about, but a really important one in a military town to be aware of and acknowledge. Then over here um, on Seaside Harbor, for those of you who are not familiar, there's a beautiful inclusive housing complex that is actually affordable housing right here in the city of Virginia Beach, right here in the Vibe District called Seaside Harbor. And this developer purchased land from the Samaritan House and then engaged with Hope House, which is a group that works with uh, adults with disabilities, intellectual disabilities, and they created affordable housing and the apartments you have to apply there through a federal application, but it's very inclusive um, and it's a really wonderful resource to have right here in the ocean front. This is winning national awards um, and we're so grateful that they're uh, a friend and they're game playing with us. And so they brought in a mural artist to do a project there. And as you can see from the bottom lower corner, some of their residents who are wheelchair bound or who do have intellectual dis disabilities were able to come down and participate just like any of the other residents that wanted to paint with the artist. And here we have a really beautiful mural uh, that was in partnership with Stand Up For Kids. They are a local group that addresses homeless youth um, and provides them both shelter, food, resources. Um, the owner, of Zero's Oceanfront Subs. Um, they, he started the Stand Up For Kids Hampton Roads chapter, I think in the late 90s, and has been doing a lot of community work. Um, he recently joined the Human Rights Commission as well. And so it was his vision to see a really big mural pay tribute to local youth. So these are actually two brothers that live here in Virginia Beach that are featured on the mural. The artist met with them, took their picture, and then created it on a three-story wall. Uh, right here in the Vibe District to help bring awareness to the support that is needed for homeless youth here in Virginia Beach. And then I'll just wrap up to say that we have a really beautiful, small, intimate event planned for Monday, April 4th, which is the closing date for the season of nonviolence. Um, it will happen right in front of the Stand Up for Kids mural here on Cypress Avenue in Virginia Beach. And so if you're in town and available to come, we certainly welcome you. Um, but it will that grassroots group of individuals and human rights commission members have a saying that we have been echoing back now since our 2018 partnership, which is be the change you wish to see in the world. Um, and we're certainly trying to do that here in Virginia Beach. We're so proud of our city and of um, everything happening here, but we also want to know and point out that there, there's room for growth and we're happy to be a part of that. So now I would love to welcome any input questions or we see the chat here. Perfect, all right, Danny, I will pass it over to you, sir. Thanks, um, thanks a lot for the, the presentation here. Um, I'm Danny, I'm a Virginia alumnus, 2006, lived in Virginia Beach. And I, um, I, I think the vibe is great. And I, I love the, the flair that it adds to the city. I, I had a question more like on a business question. Okay. Um, I have a, a startup here, a small team, and we're working remotely. And I would love eventually to have an office space. And I was curious about future sort of office availability in the vibe. I did a cursory look a few months ago and there just wasn't a whole lot. I know it's not really designed as that type of space yeah. where there's like tons of office space, but I'm curious between new construction and the surf park and what might be available in the next few years for companies to have a space because I love the walkable culture and the ocean vibe and all of that. I think it'd be very, very appealing for a company to offer that to employees. So what's coming up? What can you share on that front? Sure. Yeah, there's actually multiple private projects that have not yet gotten approval to break ground, um, but we know of at least two to three that will have um, office space available for rent. So I'm certainly ha happy to follow up with you offline about the ones that are not yet public. Um, yeah. There are some current shared spaces. Um, there's, for instance, everything from the co-working space, which well, yeah. 1701 was the very first co-working space in the city of Virginia Beach. And now there are multiple, um, but there's uh, versions of that as well. So the annex, for instance, is a, is a group where they actually rent a desk. So it's not, not a whole room, but you rent your desk. Um, so it's yeah. a step up from co-working. 
And then we have had businesses that are leasing space together to share. Okay. Um, but we do have, for instance, there is kind of corporate level class A, where they would call, you know, formal office space available in the Vibe District and kind of everything in between. So absolutely can tell you there's there's more to come. I know the dome right. site complex will have more, but we don't know exactly when it will be available. Um, might be two years down the road. But in the meantime, there's other projects that are happening. So yes, absolutely. This is a great place to work, um, a great place yeah. to be connected to other entrepreneurs like yourself. Well, I, I can send you an email. We can chat more about it offline. Yeah, that would be great. But thank you. That, that's great to know. Mm-hmm. Another question that came in had to do with um, sort of building off of Danny's point. What other other industries um, is the Vibe District looking to acquire, um, especially with the new spaces that are going to open? Love that. Yes. So um, occasionally our nonprofit board sits down with city stakeholders. And um, back in 2017, when we first did our kind of envisioning idea, it was, okay, let's think about our five senses. What do we want to see? What do we want to taste? What do we want to smell? What do we want to hear? You know, what do we want to touch when we're walking around the Vibe District? And that runs from everything to we want to hear kids playing at the skate park, right, that WRB has, to we want to be walking down the street and smell a bakery, which we now have in the Vibe District. Um, I think hearing is very important in the future. We've, we've heard a lot about, like, shared sound space, um, you know, I'm not from Virginia Beach originally, but I've been here 15 years. And for 15 years, I have heard repetitively what a music scene, you know, used to be here in Virginia Beach. And music played such an instrumental role in a lot of people's upbringing here. So we would really love to find some way to help foster that on a local level, whether it's a private entity that runs a program or it's a school of rock kind of thing, you know, that happens to come into the vibe. You know, we're, you know, who knows what it might end up looking like, but the idea of fostering and having space where people can do recordings would be really cool. Um, we definitely, if people are pushing the culinary arts envelope, food and drink are very important <laughs> to both people that live here, but also people that travel here. Um, so those are things that we're always trying to help connect the dots on. And I think people would really love to see more private galleries. Um, that has always been a struggle in Virginia Beach, from my understanding, and especially during COVID, you know, a lot of those commercial for-profit galleries all across the world had to shut down, um, and they maybe weren't given the same level of support as other private industries were. So, you know, hopefully we'll see a couple more of those, you know, spur back up, um, but really just kind of trying to diversify what isn't here already. So, um, you know, recently we heard from a fudge a gourmet fudge shop that wants to come to the vibe and it was like great we would love that we don't have that yet you know what don't we have that we can add to the eclectic nature of the neighborhood that's great and then as far as um the business side of it could you talk about that process of how to um if you're interested or know someone who would be interested in acquiring space or mm -hmm. um yeah so how does it work how does that work yeah um i'll tell you this is an old school neighborhood and there are more sidewalk deals <laughs> than anything i mean you walk down the street and you see two people talking on the side um on the sidewalk and they are doing business um but we do what we can as the nonprofit to advocate between the property owners and the public in terms of you know, matchmaking. So when people are calling us and saying, oh, I think I need um, this much square footage. So for instance, a really good past example is a, um, a boutique tattoo parlor that really focuses on um, healing veterans and also cancer patients has been looking for a space in the vibe. And it took, you know, it took four or five tries to find the right spot, but we think that we got them the right spot and they're moving forward to try to get them the pieces of that puzzle from the city end connected so that they can actually open a business here. Um, we want to try to help facilitate as we can. We don't ever get involved in kind of the dollars and cents of the business that's beyond me, but we're trying to help plug people in. The other resource is um, the economic development office and they can also do the same thing. You know, they are looking citywide, but they have tools and they have um, contacts of, of business owners and property owners that they can try to help connect people with. So it's usually between the nonprofit and, and, and economic development that we're able to help people find those connections. 
Um, and then, like I said, I mean, you show up and you just find someone on the street and say like, hey, how would I find out about finding a space? And you, they'll start to connect you. I also saw a question pop in the chat about the walking tours. That's a great question. Thank you for bringing that up. We do um, and have done free public walking tours now for the last six years. Every first Friday at 6 p.m. has been the routine for the last couple of years. And then every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Um, most often I'm leading those tours myself around the neighborhood because it's a really important education opportunity for us to explain to people on the ground what's happening. Um, but we also do have several volunteers that help chip in. And this year we'll be adding in golf cart tours for people who are unable to walk the mile and a half or two miles that it takes to get around the neighborhood. Um, and we'll be able to do groups of up to five at a time on a golf cart. And all of that information is on our website, which is bidecreativedistrict.org or on our Facebook or Instagram. So Kate, if somebody wanted to do a self tour, is there something on the site that gives them like yeah, that. so yes, a lot of people use that um, Google map. And so it's a plug in, you can look at it right from your phone. Um, if you don't prefer to use the phone, because um, it's, you know, it's small screen, it's a lot of information. We do have the printed maps, and we have two kiosks in the neighborhood where people can actually pick up a printed map, folds out real big, it's got the whole map on it. Um, the kiosks are located at 18th and Mediterranean and 18th and Cypress, you'll see this two black park signs that have all the maps in them. And I highly encourage the golf cart tour, like Kate has done that for me before and it was amazing. Yeah, it's really <laughs> fun, yeah. I don't see any other questions. Do you have any, Josh? I do not. Okay, well, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Kate. This was really interesting and we love everything you're doing down there. So keep up the good work. That's all I can say. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I hope to see you all. Come come have a tour. We'll chat on the sidewalk. <laughs> okay. I hope somebody raised their hand. Yeah. Oh, Dizelle's oh, clapping. Well, thank you all. For, oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Kate, again for a wonderful presentation. And everyone have a great rest of your day. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.